focus or epicenter, magnitude or intensity, active or inactive fault. How do these terms relate to earthquakes? Hello, Saipals! I am Ma'am Juana Rundilla, your science teacher for today. In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, you are going to differentiate earthquakes focus from epicenter, magnitude from intensity, and active from inactive fault. We will locate the focus and epicenter of an earthquake using a model. We are also going to differentiate magnitude from intensity. Furthermore, we will describe active and inactive faults. Through this episode, we will be able to appreciate the importance of using the right earthquake-related terms in understanding news and information. In the next few minutes, we will explore science for another a moment. Remember that an earthquake is a natural phenomenon that is characterized by a sudden shaking of the ground that we feel when rock layers suddenly slip past one another to a new position. The occurrence of earthquakes cannot be predicted. However, through the use of seismic instruments, scientists can locate an earthquake's origin and measure its strength. Using this fault model, let us familiarize ourselves with the main components of a fault. The upper surface of the model represents the surface of the earth. The trace of the fault on the surface of the earth is called the fault line. If we pull the two pieces apart, the flat surface between the two pieces is called the fault plane. This is where the fault slip or fault movement happens. The place where the fault begins to slip is called the focus. It is where the first movement occurs. Thus, the focus is the origin of the earthquake. Let us put together the two pieces of the model. The focus is now hidden underground. Now, Imagine a vertical line from the focus to the upper surface of the model. Let us mark the place where you expect the line to come out. The spot directly above the focus on the surface of the earth is called the epicenter. The point inside the crust where the pressure is released is called the focus. The point on the earth's surface above the focus is called the epicenter. Ah! How do scientists determine the strength of an earthquake? Seismic instruments, such as seismographs, measure earthquakes with various degrees of sensitivity. There are two ways to describe the strength and how disruptive an earthquake is. Intensity measures the amount of damage caused by the shaking at a certain location due to an earthquake, while magnitude measures the duration of movements and the amount of energy released by an earthquake. Mercalli scale measures the strength of an earthquake. This scale uses the observation of people who experience the earthquake to estimate its intensity. The intensity of an earthquake is determined by observing the effects of an earthquake in different places. Houses, buildings, and other structures are inspected. People are interviewed about what they saw, how they felt, 
or what they did. Here in the Philippines, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology uses PBOX earthquake intensity scale to describe the intensity of earthquakes. Intensity 1 means that the earthquake is scarcely perceptible, while intensity 10 means that it is completely devastating. Another way of describing the strength of an earthquake is by magnitude. The release energy of an earthquake can be calculated and measured quantitatively using the Richter scale. Earthquakes with a magnitude of 2 may or may not be felt. Those that are felt by most people have magnitudes of 4. Magnitude 6 quakes can lead to a lot of damage in highly populated areas. Earthquakes with a magnitude of 7 can cause severe damage. A quake with a magnitude of 8 or 9 results to widespread destruction, especially near the epicenter. To distinguish the two, intensity is expressed using Roman numerals, while magnitude uses Hindu-Arabic numerals. Ah! How does a scientist know if a fault is active or not? A scientist can find out active faults by observing the surroundings, by checking the country's historical records, and by studying the past and present vibrations that come from the fault. Active fault is one that has moved in the past and is expected to move again, or it may have generated earthquakes before and is capable of causing more in the future. On the other hand, inactive faults are structures that can be identified, but earthquakes are unlikely to occur there. In Tayaba City, the nearest active faults are the Infanta Fault and the Ginyangan Fault. Although the fault lines do not cross our locality, it does not mean that we cannot experience earthquakes. Let us watch a news report about an earthquake which occurred in 2019. Good evening, a magnitude 5.5 earthquake jolted parts of Quezon province and neighboring areas this afternoon. According to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology of FIVOX, the tectonic quake struck at 4.28 p.m. with a depth of 10 kilometers. Its epicenter was located 40 kilometers northeast of Bordeos town in Quezon province. A moderately strong intensity 4 was felt in Jose Pangaliban, Camarines Norte, and Quezon City. Intensity 3 was felt in Ginyangan, Quezon province. An instrumental intensity 3 was reported in Tagaytay City and Quezon City. FIVOX Director Renato Solidum said no damage have been reported as of yet because of the quake. Tremors were felt in Metro Manila and nearby provinces and buildings were evacuated, including schools, some of which announced a suspension of classes. Metro Manila train lines LRT2 and MRT3 suspended operations because of the quake. Meanwhile, FIVOX monitoring recorded a magnitude 5.1 aftershock in the same area at around 5.18 p.m. The quake was felt in more areas, Intensity 5 in Polilio, Quezon, sit, or Intensity 4 in Quezon City, and Intensity 2 in Ginayangan, Quezon. The Philippine National Police urged the public to reach out if in need of assistance. Although Tayaba City did not directly experience the tremor of the reported earthquake, there is no assurance that our city will not be affected by this disaster in the future. Ah! Knowing the right earthquake-related terms is important in understanding news and information about earthquakes when they occur. It will help us become aware of the impacts that this natural disaster brings to our lives. Ah! In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, 
we differentiated earthquake's focus from epicenter, magnitude from intensity, and active from inactive fault. The point inside the crust where the pressure is released is called the focus. The point on the Earth's surface above the focus is called the epicenter. Intensity measures the amount of damage caused by the shaking at a certain location due to an earthquake, while magnitude measures the duration of movements and the amount of energy released by an earthquake. Marcalis scale is used to measure the intensity of an earthquake. The PBOX Earthquake Intensity Scale is used in the Philippines to measure intensity. Meanwhile, Richter Scale is used to quantitatively measure an earthquake's magnitude. Intensity is expressed using Roman numerals, while magnitude uses Hindu-Arabic numerals. Active fault is one that has moved in the past and is expected to move again or it may have generated earthquakes before and is capable of causing more in the future while inactive faults are structures that can be identified but earthquakes are unlikely to occur there. Knowing the right earthquake-related terms help us better understand news and information about earthquakes when they occur. It strengthens our awareness on the impact that this natural disaster brings to our lives. Ah. That's all for today, Cypals. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. See you again next week for another Ah Moment. Only here in Agham Alam Hub. Palajans SciTech Portal. Bye!